Hello and welcome back to that Paradox Computing's introduction to computer craft, you filthy human. Yes, welcome back, filthy humans. So, what are we going to look at today? Well, um, I was thinking we might check out events. What is an event? Ev an event is a thing that happens. Ta-da! So, let's create a new file. Edit event. Um, so, follow along if you want, or do it a little bit down the line. We'll get there. So, first thing that we're going to do. Um, events are basically anything that happens to the computer. Um, anytime you press a key, um, or, well, um, lots of peripherals can generate events. Um, lots of things can generate an event. So, we're going to get an example of what an event is. To start off with, uh, we're going to create a program um, called, what is it called? Event, right? Uh, we got a few programs now to work from, don't we? Oh, that's right, I didn't even save it. Whoops, edit event. So yeah, call, create a new program called event. So what we want is, um, we're going to start with uh, event, comma. So here we're going to assign a few um, variables. Now you can actually assign more than one variable at a time. And we're going to show that now. So event, and uh, we'll go param1 equals um, os dot pull if, uh, event, so with a capital E, os dot pull event. So the, whenever you run the os dot pull event, um, basically it's just waiting for an event to happen so it can assign whatever event is going on and whatever details come with the event to these, um, uh, these variables which we have labeled event and parameter. So usually we would, up until now, we've just been dealing with one variable. Here we are actually going to assign two variables because this um, pull event is actually going to generate two variables for us. And then, so we can see what those are, we're going to do print and we'll put in um, event colon space. And this is that thing where we wrap up, uh, where we uh, mix up our variables and a string of our choosing. So we'll put event in here, and then dot dot, and then we'll make our own string so it's legible, uh, param1 colon space that. Um, so, sorry, uh, making it a string, dot dot, and then we'll go um, param1. And uh, you can just end it there. Yeah, so type that in, save it, and come back out. So do that, and then come back. Welcome back, and we're going to run event. So, um, when you type an event, nothing is happening. So we can see on the screen here, there is absolutely nothing going on. Um, you know, I liked having this here, but now it's just actually kind of distracting. <laughs> I'm finding myself watching Star Wars. I know you are too, you lazy student. So there's nothing going on. But now press the letter P. Bam. We've generated an event. The event is key. The parameter is 25, which means it's key 25. Let's run it again. This time, press uh, the number 1. It's um, event is key, and its parameter is two. So um, basically every key on the keyboard has a different number and whenever you press a key it's generating the event called key with the parameter of whatever the number the key is. Very interesting, right? Now different events will generate um, a different number of parameters. Some events will generate uh, four or five parameters. Oh actually I think four is maybe the most I've ever seen. Um, so, edit event. Um, <clears throat> so, at the moment, we're just looking for parameter, uh, the actual event and the first parameter that's being generated. Um, at the moment, I haven't been looking for anything more because we've just been pressing keys. Um, and if we do try, don't type this in because I think I'm just showing you an error that might come up. Uh, so, we'll just go param and then we'll go space uh, param th uh, two, sorry, colon space. 
uh, dot dot param two. Um, <clears throat> I think what's going to happen there because the key parameter only generates uh, one, uh, like uh, one parameter, an event, and one parameter. Uh, if we run event and press uh, a key, it's going to crash. Yeah, because that we're trying to print out that uh, that second parameter. I'll show you edit event. Because we were trying to print out param2 here, but it's got an absolutely nil value when it tried to print that, it broke the code. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. Um, but there are other things which should um, generate more than, um, yeah, more than just one. One of which being clicking on the screen with your mouse. Bam, that's generated an event. Mouse click, parameter, um, one uh, is one apparently and 27 which it should be generating coordinates on the screen which is weird that went with the first parameter being one. Oh, is that going to happen anywhere i click yeah because um there's no indents uh whenever you click the because there's the only place you can really click on the screen because of this thing is right on the left it's hard to explain but yeah so Events are very powerful because it means the computer can sit there and wait for pretty much anything that you want. Um, so let's edit event. Now this time um, we're not going to print anymore, so we'll just gray that out. Oh, actually, you know what? No. Um, <clears throat> what we're going to make is uh, a new little program that's going to be useful for you. So edit listen. This is going to be a, something, it's something that I use quite often. Um, and what we're going to get it to do is, um, yeah, we're going to assign um, event again, event, par param one and param two. So the same as we had before. <clears throat> and that's going to equal again, os pull event. Ah, but what actually I wanted you to do, sorry, is we're going to put this in a while true do loop, okay? Um, and then we're going to say um, print again, print, uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, print um, event, really we should just use the last one, but oh well, we're here now. Uh, print event colon space dot dot event uh, dot dot uh, param one param one uh, oops probably didn't format that quite properly because this is a bit that the user's gonna see yep let's put a space in there it needed a space there all those two are gonna be touching param one dot dot and uh, param two colon space dot dot param two uh, oops don't need that there end okay um, and then actually we'll just put an end in there so that's going to be our little script called listen save exit now um, run listen and what it's going to do instead is uh, anytime we we click somewhere or whatever now it's just going to keep going. Check that out. Oh, mouse drag. I didn't know mouse. Oh, look at that. Mouse drag is giving us all those coordinates. Cool. Actually, I think there's a third coordinate because this whole constant one thing doesn't sound right to me. Uh, maybe that's the button we're pushing. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So parameter one is left click and right click one and two. So there's actually a um uh, a fourth um yeah a fourth thing being generated there. This is probably the uh, like uh, x coordinate. Uh, yep, it's the X coordinate. And there's also a Y coordinate that we're not seeing, which is very interesting. Cool. Now you can press control. Well, actually, if you just press control, it's going to break it because um, that's a key which only has one parameter and it's trying to print parameter two again. So ignore that. But um, why don't you uh, clear your screen by just typing clear and run listen again. Now this time, chuck a chat box underneath... Um, your, or anywhere connected to your computer. Because um, I don't think... Now, usually you do have to wrap a peripheral, but I'm fairly certain that if we don't wrap the peripheral and we just type, hello... Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Yeah, 
there it is. So uh, even though that peripheral is not wrapped by the program, it's still generating events for the computer. The event being chat, the parameter being my name, and the, um, the first parameter being my username, and the second one being the message that was typed into chat. How cool is that? I'm just going to have a drink. Excuse me. My throat was dry. So um, there's another event. And when you can say, you can use chat. So let's um, kill that. So hold on to that listen program. Um, so yeah, edit listen. If you haven't made that, make that now. Because really what we're trying to do is create a library of, um, of, uh, of programs. So you can always go back there and see how you do something. So try and always just hold on. Make sure you've labeled your computer. And yeah, uh, what I will start doing is putting up the, um, these little bits of code up onto Pastebin as well. So you can always get there and go... Go up there and just go, oh, hey, cool, that's how you do that. But try and hold on to your computer with all your programs and your work on there because you should be proud of these things that you have made. Cool. So anyway, um, make sure that you keep the um, the listen file because that's actually just, I find myself using that all the time because I'll be like, oh, damn, what's the event that, um, what, you know, that a speaker will make? Oh, okay, well, I'll run listen and type test. Oh, look. The event is called um, chat, and its first parameter is going to be my username, then the message. So it's very handy for um, using these events. But when would you actually want to use an event in your code? Well, what we're going to um, create now is we're going to edit um, conversation. Yeah, edit conversation. So what we're going to do is we're going to do um, a peripheral dot wrap from the last episode. So we're going to call this chat equals uh, peripheral dot wrap, um, and then we're going to first thing we're going to chuck in um, is a well. Let's wrap up. Let's do a bunch of stuff that we've used from other episodes. So this little bit of script might be a bit confusing because it's using stuff that we've that we have used uh, previously, but it'll be good. It will be fun. So we're going to start off with, um, so we saw before, uh, when we're running listen, we saw before what the events that were generated, right? So let's just go that again. Um, what we're going to wait for is we're going to tell the computer, um, to, uh, I'm just trying to think. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to say, um, event. So we're going to do the same thing event again, event, uh, param one and param two are equal to os dot pull event, but this time we're gonna put we're gonna actually specify what it is we're looking for to pull from the event before it moves on. So we're just basically saying we're looking for a specific event here, and what we're gonna say is chat as we saw under we saw before. Um, we saw before that the event that the chat box was creating was called um, chat underscore message. And how about just to prove that we go back to listen and then we type something into chat and then we look at this and look the event. Oh, sorry. The event is chat. See, it's a good thing I checked. <laughs> Edit conversation. Um, so actually the event we're looking for is just going to be called chat. So there you go, guys, just type that in. Um, and now whenever it triggers a chat event, our script's going to run. So, um, next let's use an if statement. Yeah. So if, um, so the first parameter that was the event was chat. The parameter one was the username, and the next thing was their message. So let's just say if param two is equal to. So we're using our if statements again. Is equal to hello, hello, hello. Then, um, and we'll and ah oh, should we add, well no we'll say uh, chat dot say. Uh, hi, guy. Um, and we'll just end it there. 
So that's just a nice quick little one. So conversation. Peripheral 20. Expected a string. Oh my god. Man, that is a noobish error. Uh, bottom, isn't it? It's on the bottom. So, as you can see there, whenever you wrap a peripheral, like I repeated over and over again last episode, you got to put the side that's on as a string. I didn't put a side. So, there you go. That will happen. Okay, so, if we type random shit into chat, nothing's going to happen. But, if we say, um, hello... It's going to break the code. <laughs> what happened? Edit conversation. If parameter is equal to hello. Oh, you know what? We broke it the first time. I'm sorry. If we, because what, uh, I'll show you what happened there because that was my own fault conversation. So what happened there was the first time that we typed something into chat, it just went, oh, we've got a chat event. No, it's not hello, and end the code. So how about we do it, we put a while true do in there, so we can um, say stuff over and over again. Um, and you should, you know, indent your code here. Oh my god. Da -da, da -da -da. <clears throat> okay, so now let's run conversation again. Oh, conversation, <laughs> wow. Okay, so conversation is running. Uh, let's make it early morning. Okay, so now if we type in um, random stuff, nothing will happen. And because we put it in a loop, now we'll just keep going. So it's not going to, you know, die. Um, and yeah, let's now type in hello. Hey, it's replied to us. Hi, guy. So now um, using uh, uh, the os.pull event and events, we can um, make the computer only react when certain things happen, which is really powerful. Um, and you can get events from your peripherals. You can get events from you know interacting with the screen here. You can get all different kinds of events. So os.pull event is very, very handy. Cool. Well, I think um, that's probably, you know, surmised that pretty well so guys look thank you so much for watching um if you've got any questions about that episode because it did deal with some you know kind of high level stuff um please post in the comments please message me i'm happy to answer any questions that you have uh like and subscribe or don't it's fine you know it's fine i'm used to it now you know i want to be loved that's all i want but okay <sighs> bye